Good morning, and welcome all to worship as we gather in our Lord's name today, as we gather both physically in the sanctuary and as we gather online with our live stream community. A special welcome to all, and thank you for our prelude as we come back together. I've heard so much in these last months how much people have missed music, so Don, thank you for giving us the gift of music as we walk through these days. Just a few announcements to highlight this morning as part of our worship service. First, we will be having our bi-monthly food distribution this Thursday from four till six. We just distribute food on the south side of the parking lot. Anyone is welcome. Um, it's been a very successful community building event, so there will be produce as well this week. So four to six, just drive through and you can receive Food is part of the COVID food response. A few changes to our prayer list this week. First, we remember Carrie Plucker and her family on the death of her sister-in-law, Gina Henry. Her prayer service was yesterday, and we thank the family for the flowers that are part of the worship service in honor of Gina today. And we remember Deb Olson and her family as she mourns the loss of her husband, Jim. We've been praying for Jim for many, many months. So our sympathy to the Olsons as they enter this time of mourning. That is, oh, for the Olsons, the, there will be a visitation at Heritage Funeral Home on Thursday from 5 until 7. That's our announcements. I invite you to please stand if you're able. Let us praise the Lord. Who has heard us every time we cry? What is there to give back? For all God has given to us. Let us lift up God's name so everyone can hear it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our gathering song.
seated. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. The prophets who preceded you and from me from ancient times prophesied war and famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesied, prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Our psalm is Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know that people shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. And our second reading is from Romans, the sixth chapter. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present to your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been free from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading. We invite you to please stand for the reading of the Gospel. From Matthew chapter 10, Jesus speaks. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. The reward of the righteous. We have a scripture today where Jesus is following up his teaching from last week 
that was troubling for our ears when he said, I did not come to bring peace, but that my news will actually bring tension within families, within neighbors. And today he follows that up immediately after with conversation about reward. The reward of the righteous. It's a very churchy word, righteous. And so what Jesus does is he provides a children's term to simplify perhaps the largest concept he has to give to people. Again and again in the Gospel of Matthew, he talks about the righteousness of God being given to the people. Righteousness, a return to Eden, a return to the way we just know in our deepest hearts that things should be when we experience the brokenness and the death and the anger of the world. There's something in us that longs for God's presence, and it's called righteousness, the way to be made right with God, to walk the path of Eden. And the way he describes the reward of the righteous is just like this. And so Deacon Christie is going to help you with the children's sermon. Are you ready? Pretty complex. What does the reward of the righteous look like? Thank you. Amen. Go and peace serve the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name is a disciple. Truly none of these will lose their reward. That the reward of the presence of God, of God bringing us back who we were called to be through Jesus, looks like giving just a cup of water to a thirsty person. Sometimes the children's sermons are more powerful than the so-called adult sermons. I've been hearing children's sermons my entire life, and perhaps my favorite children's sermon giver spoke directly to adults. I was preached to five days a week in my childhood in the 1970s by a Presbyterian minister who used to sing this song to me every day, along with millions and millions of children. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in the beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. Always wanted to Something, something, something with you. <laughs> I don't remember everything from childhood, but I dated myself, and some of you were mouthing the words as I said that. Mr. Rogers, talking about a beautiful day as a neighbor with you. Sounds biblical, doesn't it? Love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. To live in a neighborhood with you. The reward of a righteous person is like giving a cup of water to a child. Righteousness is about reclaiming a life that God has intended for us. That we truly can have that beautiful day in the neighborhood. Mr. Rogers was in the news again in 2019, and some of you may have seen the movie that was made about Mr. Rogers, because if you are a young person now, you may have never heard of him. But there was a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood movie that was written in 2019, and it was a children's sermon that went to the very core of the deepest adult experiences. Because the movie starts with a hardened, hardened, hardened New York reporter by the name of Lloyd, who was given the terrible assignment to interview Mr. Rogers, and a list of stories about heroes. 
but, and based on a true story, this particular writer is known for just digging up dirt on everyone he interviews. And he cannot believe that Mr. Rogers is who he says he is. So he goes in hard-hearted and hard-headed. And the entire movie is about Mr. Rogers basically offering a cup of water to a very, very thirsty, cynical, broken man. And what opens up this man's heart is his relationship with his father as he's going to become a father himself. A boy who grew up with a violent and distant father and is afraid to love and be the type of father he wants to be. A cup of water. The reward of the righteous if you want to sum up what righteousness is, it's simply being made right with God. And the answer is Jesus. It's one of those few times that we can get a very simple answer to the deepest things that trouble who we are, those things that keep us up at night, those things that make us wonder what is the right way, what is the wrong way, who is right, who is wrong. And it truly is one of those times where the answer is Jesus. You may have heard the story of the children's sermon, where the little boy comes up to the front and the minister is describing a little animal. And he says, all right, children, there's a little animal that eats nuts, it climbs trees, and it has a long tail, and there was silence. None of the children would say anything. He says, well, you would recognize this animal. It makes a little chattering sound, and do you know what that animal is? And finally, one brave boy raised his hand and said, Pastor, it sure sounds like you're describing a squirrel, but since this is a children's sermon, I know the answer really is Jesus. <laughs> the answer really is Jesus. So when Jesus is walking with his disciples for these years, and he's talking about God's righteousness not, righteousness not coming by us trying to be so good, but it is something that we receive. The first verse in our reading, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, is more often translated as whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. And this becomes an explanation of what Jesus' mission is for you what Jesus' mission is for me, then we simply go out as those children who have drunk from the well, from the living water, for those who have heard a story that is so foundational, so core underneath us, that we truly can be neighbor. And it becomes an answer to how do we enter into our world. The reward of the righteous is simply the experience of being loved so that we can go out in love. And we come back to that children's sermon again and again and again because we know we don't always feel that way. What do you do when the last thing you feel is kind and loving? Mr. Rogers had a song about that too, but I won't try to sing it. But if you look it up on, on YouTube, you can Google it. It's powerful. In 1968, there was a, a fight in Congress about whether to fund public television. And Mr. Rogers sat across from a very direct and very tough city congressman trying to explain what they do in his show. And he talked about working with children and helping them to deal appropriately with their emotions. And he shared this song in the hearing before Congress, a song that said, what do you do with the mad that you feel? It's a song for adults, for all of us, that was disguised as a children's sermon. What do you do with that mad you feel when you feel so mad you couldn't bite? I've been there. When the whole wide
wide world seems oh so wrong, and nothing you do seems right. And he goes on to talk about this experience of what do people do? Do they hunt among the players? Do they go for a tag? But then it ends with this positive, beautiful twist. I can stop when I want to. I can stop when I wish. I can stop, stop, stop any time. And what a good feeling to feel like this. And know that feeling is really mine. The reward of the righteous. The reward of our Lord speaking into our lived realities. The difficulties we experience. And drawing us back. And what a good feeling to feel like this and to know that the feeling is mine. The reward of the righteousness, the reward of how we were built and meant to be. Another way to talk about this, for some it's conversion, for some it's uh, waking up every day and remembering that we are claimed by the living Lord. But however you describe it, Christianity and a part of our mission is to invite people that this welcome, this being received, gives us an entirely new way to view our world. Astronauts repeatedly tell the story that when they go into space and they look back at the Earth, this giant, beautiful blue ball with a tiny atmosphere sitting in this universe of black. It almost always has a psychological effect on them. They've written about this, many of the astronauts, enough of them to the point that they've given a name to this experience that the astronauts have when they look at the Earth. It's called the overview effect, the, the overview. And it's described as this state of mental clarity that occurs when they are flung so far away from Earth that you become totally overwhelmed and awed by the fragility and unity of life on our blue globe. It's the uncanny sense of understanding the big picture and a feeling connected to, and yet to a yet bigger and more intricate process bubbling on Earth. A state of mental clarity that in the, the hustle and the bustle and the challenges of daily life that we all forget the interconnectedness of all of God's work in the world. And there are those few who have seen us from space and realize that it is all connected. The overview effect is what? righteousness is. It's not just a foundational grounding of being saved and claimed and renewed by Jesus Christ. It's not just a lived out reality of trusting our Lord to be with us, to give us the, what we need through the challenges. It's not just the story of us having the courage to go out and to live the reality of being neighbor. It is also an overarching reality of for God so loved the world, literally in the Gospel of John, for God so loved the cosmos, the ultimate overview effect that no matter how small or separate or angry or afraid or cynical we feel, the way that God has chosen to work and to bring this overview effect to us is through intimately changing our perspective. Intimately changing our perspective through the sun. One of the most beautiful things that we do not remember is looking up into the face of a parent when we're babies. But grown-ups or uncles or aunts who have held that baby and have food and coddled and that baby smiles and there's a connection, we recognize at that moment 
that our perspective, this 18-inch perspective of one beloved human being interacting with another beloved human being, is the same distance as the 18 inches from the head to the heart, the head that makes us coarse and hard and cynical into a heart that is turned from stone into a heart of flesh. All of these biblical images that rotate around and around the gravitational pull of Christ our Lord. This overview that we often cannot see. Until that moment that a witness helps open our eyes. Now Mr. Rogers singing us a song. Me or you being a listening ear to a neighbor. Of being a word of hope in the midst of despair. Of being present with another. And suddenly our perspective has changed. Both the intimate perspective and the giant perspective and a reminder that we are no longer thirsty. And who ever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple? Truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. None of these. The one who has received the cup of water, the one who is giving their cup of water, we are living out this word of hope. So brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, whatever your challenges are right now, Whatever your difficulties, whatever your joys, your mission is being equipped to be a small message of love and hope in the world. Because in doing that, you are revealing your perspective, you are revealing this overview, you are giving testimony to the hope that is in you. And I challenge you to think through how do I attach the name of Jesus to my hope? And I invite you to do that as a witness. How is it that Jesus is attached to this hope that is in me, this change of perspective, this love, this for God so loved the world, for God so loved me? How does Jesus' name become part of my story? It's a good story, friends, and it is a righteous story that has nothing to do with self-righteousness, just the righteousness of God. I'll end with one more Mr. Rogers song. I'm not going to sing it, but I'll give you the words. It's the words he ended every program with. That seems like we've come full circle for that man in the movie who at the end of the movie has his picture taken with his entire family, his father and his son and all of those beloved. And the end of the program, it's such a good feeling to know that you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside and you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make that a snappy new day. And the program closes with, it's a good day with you being you. The you that God made. May we all have ears to listen.
saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our offering. <laughs> Joyous God, we sing the glory of your name. Your strength empowers us to face the challenges of this world. Your generosity provides us with more than we need. Remind us that all we have is yours alone, and encourage us to share in our bounty so that others may know of your goodness through us. Lord, in your mercy. In creating God, you encourage us to live according to the guidance of your own spirit. You remind us that it is your will for us to work for the good of all people. In many places today, slavery to, sl to, slavery to sin promotes violence, de degradation, and shame. Help us to seek out those places where the light of your love can overcome the darkness. Make us instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace. In your wisdom, you decided to offer us forgiveness before we realized we need to ask. Your love urges us to turn from sin and live in you. Because of your mercy, we are strengthened to start fresh every day, being the kinds of people others will recognize as your own children. Help us, Lord, to love our neighbor as we walk through life doing good in your name. Lord, in your mercy. And God of love, you look on us sinners and you make us saints. Your tender care brings life to our weary souls. We pray now for these people that we name out loud in our hearts. Ron Sine, Steve Jones, Dad, Jean, and his brother Jamie. Sarah Hummel's Uncle Fred Tiedemann. Jerry and Diane Hornis' son-in-law, Doug Medetsky. Shirley Oldman's sister, Linda. Jamie Atkins' dad, Kevin Rob. Tara Johannesson's brother-in-law, Jesse. We pray for Troy Smith while he is in active duty. Lord, we also pray for those who have suffered a loss. We pray for Carrie Plucker and family and the loss of her sister-in-law, Gina Henry. And we lift up the family of Jim Olson. We pray for Deb. And we pray for 
Corky and Cindy Miles, as Jim was their brother-in-law. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise for the benediction. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. We'll sing. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.